the case of Senator Ralph Shorty. There's no shortage of conspiracy theories regarding the illicit activities of those in some of the highest positions of power. These theories range from secret cults dedicated to human sacrifice, all the way to the insertion of lizards as world leaders. While we may never be able to determine the veracity of reptilian conspiracy theory, what is true is that time and time again we see people who are in a position of power have dark deeds come to light. Is this the Oklahoma guy? Is this the Oklahoma, this is the Oklahoma senator who was caught with like a with like a fucking uh underage uh male like underage minor that he was like sex trafficking, right? Spoilers. I'm just come on, dude. What Ralph do you mean? Ralph Allen Lee Shorty was born in the oil city of Casper, Wyoming in February of 1982 and spent the early years of his childhood in South Dakota before moving to Oklahoma City. I'm a fucking what political commentator, dude. Like Jesus Christ. Dude. He attended Westmore High School and later Heartland Baptist Bible College in preparation for mission work in Uganda. Shorty married his high school sweetheart in 2002 and decided to enter the oil and gas industry, foregoing his initial aspirations as a missionary. Love you, Hassan. Over the next eight years, Shorty worked as a production consultant and stayed involved politically as a volunteer for the Republican Party, up until 2010 when he quit his job to pursue the Oklahoma State Senate. Shorty won the election, campaigning on family values, despite placing second in the initial Republican primary. He served over the next seven years, including a re-election in 2014. In his time in the Senate, he became known as a staunch conservative, pushing bills targeting illegal immigrants and the expansion of gun rights. Additionally, he regularly voted with other Republican Party members to pass bills targeting gay and transgender people, including a measure passed in 2017 that would allow business owners to discriminate against gay people. Despite fitting in with his colleagues, Shorty was never able to finish his second term, as a result of the situation we're about to explore. Just after 1 a.m. on March 9, 2017, police were called to Super 8 Motel in Moore, Oklahoma, in order to do a welfare check on a 17-year-old juvenile. A witness had seen the boy hey, get into a, a white Jeep I Cherokee remember. with an unknown man and watched the pair enter room 120 at the motel complex. The witness told the father of the boy, who shortly thereafter could notify police. Upon arrival, the police identified the car in question nearby and Ask. knocked on the door of the room asking the pair to come out. The man, later identified as Ralph Shorty, did not open the door and asked why the police were there. Shorty outright denied that there was a 17-year-old juvenile in the room, and after a few minutes of back and forth, the police acquired a master key and let themselves in. The following limited footage of the confrontation has been released, with sections omitted given they depict the minor in question. Right, come out. I'm right here. I'm right here. Hey, hey. Come out yeah, before you get me worried. I'm, I'm Show me your hands. Slow, okay. slow, slow. Take a seat on the... What's, what's, going on? what's going on with you, man? I'm just trying to have... A good time? Yeah. What's your name? Ralph. Ralph what? Shorty. You got an ID, Shorty? Shorty doesn't sound like a last name to me. It's my last name. Shorty? That's one of your state senators, brother. What the fuck do you mean? And a conservative one at that, so... He's probably uh, your biggest ally, you brother. You, you fucking kidding me? Just because you don't know any better doesn't mean... Just because you don't know any better doesn't mean that, you know, it's not important for you, for your career. Probably yes. voted for him, yeah. And then I you voted like right down the line, feet. brother, I don't know. It kind of doesn't work, does it? I'm sorry, guys. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. What's yeah, that's problem? what we do. What's He's 17. Okay. What do you mean, okay? I, I didn't know you. Okay. But you got a 17-year-old hanging out with you. I mean. Dad's worried and. You understand that? Yeah, I didn't know. Okay, you got ID on you? Is there any other drugs in here other than weed? No, there's nothing. Is there any guns in here? No, sir. Okay. It should be noted that Shorty's t-shirt depicts a sandwich and the text, Now go make me a sandwich, alongside a Bible quote, Ephesians 5.22, which calls for wives to submit to their husbands. Can you, can you show me that he's only 17? No, I can't, but I can convince you that he is. Well, yeah, I can put you in handcuffs and throw you in the back of a car. Yeah. We do that okay, route. let's see an ID real quick. Wait, this cop is like, how jovial, dude. 
This is called, this is called, I'm going to fucking arrest you technique. Where when the uncooperative uh, suspect decides to, you know, flex the fact that they are uh, white and also conservative in Oklahoma and a uh, state, state senator, uh, a cop can uh, just say, hey, I'm going to fucking arrest you. I guess this is exciting for Oklahoma. I mean, it's, uh, you, if you remember the Daniel Holtzclaw case and what we found out afterwards, I'm surprised that the cops weren't the ones who were doing the abuse here in this circumstance. We didn't just show up here Thanks, sir. We can take a seat back on the bed. I'm gonna go get this back to them. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm telling you, he's 17. Like, I wouldn't lie to you. Like, uh, what, what sense? What sense does it make me lie to? But listen, what, whatever you're doing, it's a bad fucking idea. Does that make sense to you? Like, getting high with a young kid, whatever, is a bad idea. No matter how, if they're 17 or 20, like, it's a bad idea. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you want to have fun by yourself. If you got things you got to figure out, you need to figure that out and you can live your life however you want to live it. But when you start doing it with kids and stuff, then it starts to become a serious, serious problem. Because, because listen to me, like if he was a couple years younger, you'd be going to prison. You understand what I'm saying? With no strings attached, we'd be blowing the store up and we'd be taking you in our car. You understand what I'm saying? So you need to be careful about what you're doing out there. Just like he really needs to second guess his life choices but you do too because you can get yourself in a bad bad fucking spot do you understand bro he's 17 dude like what do you mean examine his life choices bro what life choices he's literally 17 now i just want to point out something here because i know there's a lot of chatters who love defending uh or, or who love attacking the age of consent laws or defending age of consent laws in Oklahoma. It's specifically in Oklahoma. It's 16 is the age of consent. Okay. So the, the kid is 17, but I believe when it comes to sex trafficking or when it comes to like, uh, hiring someone as a, club. uh, prostitute, if you're under the age of 18, like it's already illegal, but if you're under the age of 18, it's like super illegal. Pointing that out for all the chatters who want to fucking jump and be like, oh, it's fucking dude. It's still, uh, it's fucking 16 in Oklahoma, dude. Very weird to say. Ye. A super crime. Thank you. Yes. Understand that? Does that make sense? At the scene, the officers found an open box of condoms, a laptop, and a bottle of hydrocodone in Shorty's backpack. But he was not arrested following the incident, given the age of consent in Oklahoma is 16. In the time following, police interviewed the juvenile, who admitted he had known Shorty for approximately a year prior, and that they had met through a Craigslist personal encounter ad that read something like the following, later obtained by the FBI. The poster of the Craigslist ad is seeking men, the younger the better, for a bromance, with legal in parentheses. Police ascertained from the victim that Shorty went by the alias Jamie Tilly and that he had known the victim was underage from the moment they started communicating on the messaging app Kick. Police were able to retrieve the conversations from the victim's iPad and read the following exchange from that very night. Because it included the mention of payment, this exchange alone changed the situation from a very odd event that would shatter Shorty's image to a federal crime that would shatter his life. The conversation continues with logistics of both parties meeting up and sickening exchanges that I don't care to read out loud, but which can be read from the FBI affidavit linked in the description. Need a boy for bromance, looking for younger, better legal to younger, looking for younger, the better legal in parentheses, white or mixed, easiest way to communicate is kick. The kick shot record was able to provide minute by minute recount of Shorty making his way to the home of the victim where he picked him up. Additionally, the witness was able to identify the arrival of Shorty as taking place at the exact time his I'm here text was sent. Police also identified the Jeep Cherokee as being registered to Shorty through the state of Oklahoma 
and found that the motel room was paid for by Shorty with a company debit card from his consulting firm. This allowed investigators to connect the Jamie Tilly alias to Shorty, which was crucial as we will later see as his main objection. Approximately three days after the incident, the Cleveland County Court filed a warrant for his arrest for the crime of engaging in child prostitution, among other supporting charges. Shorty was called on his cell phone and asked to come in for questioning. What's important to keep in mind as this interrogation proceeds is that Shorty has been a member of public office for seven years at this point while keeping his secret hidden, and is clearly used to lying and deceiving. The problem here is police have essentially irrefutable evidence of a crime, and outright denial does little for his defense. This is what is known as the Matt Gates technique. Pay attention to the demeanor and tone of the detectives in the early portion of the interview, because there is a striking difference throughout the remainder. So, other than this, you're doing all right today? Yeah, all right. First off, let me start off with saying I've got a little bit of a blood pressure issue. Okay. So, just if I get a little lightheaded. Let me know. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah, let us know. Do you have a glass of water or anything? No, I'm fine. Um, um, first off, Free to go anytime you want. You can stop talking to us anytime you want. No big deal. Just say, hey, I'm done talking. I'm done okay. talking, okay? Bro, they didn't even sit between him and the door, dude. I guess that's because he's like a fucking, again, state senator. So they just like don't want to embarrass him too much or something. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. And we'll let you, and we'll let you out. Let us know if you have any buttons, okay. anything like that. Any medical attention will get you out here and get okay. it for you real quick. Huh? So, Oklahoma. You still know, what's your last name again? Sure. We got a pee. Alright. <clears throat> well, I'd like to tell you on the phone. I guess I uh, had some officers contact you at Super 8 um, on uh, March the 9th, I think it was, real early in the morning. Yeah, I was going to say that. And uh, so that's what we're here to talk about. Why don't you tell me what, what transpired there? Well, we were. Uh uh, inside talking and uh, you know we heard a bang on the door I honestly didn't know who it was couldn't see it through the keyhole or the the peephole and so um, you know the uh, young man I was with I know has um, you know I've known him for we've been talking he's come to the coffee shop that I operate a couple times uh, shoot I've even had him over to my house played video games before um, had no idea told me when I first met him that he was 20. And uh, it's so when they first got there, I, I didn't know what, what the issue was. Um, you know, I uh, didn't know if it was, you know, somebody trying to get in or what. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I asked them, it was something they said it was a wellness shirt or something like that. And I said, hey, I'm fine. And um, they, uh, they were persistent. And then I could finally see a badge on one of them and then, I said that there was a minor inside the room. Um, obviously, I had no idea when I first met this young man. He told me he was 20 years old. Um, like I said, we've been talking on the phone for a while. He, in fact, for a few months, he even told me that he went to California to try to be in the music industry or something. Um, so that was when I opened the door. Was, I mean, it just didn't make any sense to me why, you know, there'd be a, you know, actually, <laughs> What I asked him was, I said, are you came for the Bro, politics, stayed for the I know, like, this is, at this later, point, it's like asshole. a cliche. We've seen so many people over-explain, which is like a classic thing that people do when they're caught in four fucking K. But I really do want to know how he's going to try to get out of this. Like, how, like, how are you going to describe the situation you found yourself in? Where, like, what, are you... Are you, are you educating this child, like, at the Motel 8? What, what, what are you going to do? He said, no, let me go talk to them. I said, okay. And um, he went out there, and that's, you know... I... Deny knowledge of age, but I don't think that works. Ha <laughs> ha, actually, uh, unfortunately, yes, in Oklahoma, you can do that. That is a viable defense. 
Uh, however, in this case, he doesn't have that defense considering that they, again, caught him in 4K, as in the younger the better, looking for a bromance. Uh, so, you know, when you say that and you hire someone specifically by virtue of them being young uh, as a, as a uh, prostitute, then, you know, good luck. But yes, it is true. You can... You can literally fucking... Uh, Use that as a defense that, oh, I thought that they were 18. They looked young. You don't know what you My man said he did say legal, though. Yeah. Iron, ironclad defense, my friend. Never mind. He said in parentheses, legal. They talked about, but um, I asked him to check his ID. So again, I've never, never even thought to ask him for his ID. There's no reason to. Um, so anyway, um, anyone who says your microphone is ringing has to send me a clip going forward. I just don't care anymore. I, I just want to hear what it sounds like and I'll try to fix it. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. I guess after that, um, um one of the men, uh, Sergeant something, I can't remember his last name. He's, he's bald. Um, he lectured quite a deal at that point. I, I was, you know, again, blood pressure, um, I had to sit down. Couldn't couldn't even really. I don't even honestly remember what I said to him. Um, a little bit, I think. And uh, the moment that you find yourself talking about your blood pressure, and uh, that's the reason why you just couldn't uh, be bothered to ask about the age of the uh, person you were hiring as a prostitute. Like, wait, let's hear it. In parentheses, legal. They talked about, but um, I asked. In parentheses, legal. Um, send me a clip going forward i just don't care anymore i i just want to hear what it sounds like and i'll try to fix there's literally no ringing there is nothing i have no idea what you're talking about i don't hear it you might have tinnitus dude or like some sort of bad setting or something i don't hear it no, it's not. They actually aren't lying. This is the worst chat bit ever. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Get fucked. If you have shitty ears, like, sorry, sucks to suck then. Okay, how about that? Thank you, Patente, for the 28 tier one gift subs. Yeah, I don't care that your ears suck. I just needed to, to not have a stroke. Um, so I was caught off guard by that. I think they asked me at some point if the they could search the, the, we made along the, way. Um, the room. I have my computer bag with me and... Maybe it's the audio compressor that you have on. Maybe you should turn I it on. I search my computer bag as well as the room. Um, as far as I know, there's nothing found. Uh, so, um, that was that. In short, he's opening two minute and 43 second monologue. He's done a couple things. First, he goes out of his way to mention that the kid told him that he was 20, twice. Two, says that he doesn't even remember what he had told police. And three, brought up his blood pressure condition. Shorty has also completely brushed over the fact that police had to let themselves in, but given the scenario, the police will ignore that and push forward. Okay, I said they said they, <coughs> pardon me, they said they smelled weed in the, in the room. Did, uh, were y'all smoking weed or anything? I was not like smoking weed. Was there any in there? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, and I, yeah, I, let, I asked them to search. They they wanted to search my bag. Um, so I, I don't remember. I think he. I mean, he 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 needed a place to stay for the night. And I think he had a bag with him. I don't know if they searched that. I did not. Um. So did you stay there all night after the cops left? Or? No, I left a, a little while later. And what about what time? I don't know. Okay. I, but I you didn't stay make, until in the morning. I wanted to make sure that I was okay mm -hmm. to leave. Okay. Um, and that was off. So you say you, how long you known the guy? It's been definitely over a year. Okay. What What are you knowing about? What's his name? Hagen. Hagen. Do you know his last name? No. No. Okay, guys, I don't care. I don't care if it's ringing in the end of my fucking conversation because the noisy it is still picking up the the background noise of the uh, of the fucking AC. Okay, I don't care. 
I'm not going to turn off the AC and fucking sweat over here for your like three second uh, minor inconvenience. So we are not fixing that and we are moving on. So I, I literally don't care. I, I literally, let me just make this as clear as possible. This minor inconvenience for you is, is not significant enough for me to uh, turn off the AC in the background and, and fucking suffer, okay? Most people can't hear it anyway. So, uh, I don't care. Okay, good. No, honestly, I don't remember. He's been over my coffee shop a couple times. Um, I don't care. The detective didn't say anything to prompt this coming response. Just simply express passive disapproval since he knows Shorty is not being open and honest. Shorty, sensing this, will now launch into a monologue aimed to discredit the victim and aid his case. He, uh, I know that he had been uh, arrested for drug dealing in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he had dropped out of high school. Um, you know, he was trying to get a, uh, a GED. Uh, I was trying to help him through that. In fact, when we first met, I was trying to help him study and things like that for the GED. Uh, and then when I lost contact with him for four or five months, when I guess when he went to California or wherever, um, I just assumed that he had, you know, I didn't know that's where he, where he went. Well, how did y'all meet? At the coffee shop. You, I'm, I'm pretty sure of, of that. Um, but what coffee shop were you talking That's my guy on the coffee shop. Oh, what on, it's called Holy Grounds Coffee. Okay. And uh, uh, 8613 Southwestern. Okay. And... Um, I'm pretty sure that's how we met. I honestly don't remember. Um, it's only place I probably would have met the guy. Fun fact. Ralph Shorty was also the, uh, the state campaign chair for none other than Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election. He was, of course, you know, he did this as well, but that kind of uh, goes along with the rest of the narrative, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so anyway, he, uh, he's been over a couple times. We met at the coffee shop. I'm pretty sure that it's the only place I probably would have met the guy. Shorty's trying to cover himself steps and not lock himself into any version of the story. Silent detective picks up on this. And we'll ask the same questions early, um, uh, later on. When he came back, you know, he, uh, he was, I don't know, in fact, he told me he wanted to go be an anesthesiologist or something. And I you know, said, so you've got to get, you can't go without a high school diploma. You can't do anything without a high school diploma. And so, um, you know, I know that the day after the incident happened, he was going to test for the GED. Strongly encouraged him to do that. Um, and um, the night that, uh, that he called me, um, he said he just needed to get out of his house. Um, I'm assuming I have, I mean, I thought he had told me that he lived with some friends. And um, he had told me in the past that, you know, it was hard for him to get clean because he was always with his friends that, that were, you know, living with him. Um, and so, you know, um, when he called and said he needed to get out of there, you know, that he had to test the next day, then the choice was to bring him over to my house, which I don't think my wife would have appreciated that very much. Um, she probably would have been okay with it, but I just uh, so it figured it would be easier just to get him a place. Um, and then we decided to talk. So. so far, Shorty is doing his best to paint himself as a savior, mentioning that the guy was arrested for drug dealing and that he doesn't have a high school diploma. Essentially, what he's saying is that bringing him to a motel at midnight was an act months, of goodwill. Thanks for the constant Shorty has also pass. lied about how they met, saying it was at his coffee shop when it was really on the internet. The detectives know this and are about to dig in. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Um, how do you, when do you, when you, do you text him or how do y'all communicate? That's so nice of him, dude. Usually phone calls. Phone calls? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's interesting because, um, on his tablet, he has a conversation that he says he had, that he had with you using an app called Kick. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> There's a pretty lengthy conversation Good guy, Shorty. that uh, he says is with the guy that is you that he um, <clears throat> that is online or the kick 
kick ID is Jamie Tilly. Um, and you told the officers that night that that's who went to your own line. He, he calls me Jamie. Uh huh. And I'm not sure why. Okay. And um, anyways, so we we've, we've got a conversation between him and this Jamie Tilly about. Um, he says I need money for spring break. Uh, Jamie Tilly says I don't uh, really have any legitimate things I need help with right now. Would you be interested in sexual stuff? He says yes. This goes on about how to come get you. Blah blah blah. Um, we go on. Huh. He says uh, he starts calling this guy Daddy. He says hurry up, Daddy. I'm super horny. Uh, hey, keep me up, Daddy, because I want you bad, Daddy. Uh, the guy named Jamie Tilly says I'm going to. Uh, this goes on and on and on and on. Well, then. It gets to the end. Bro, is this guy so fucking stupid that he doesn't realize that, like, they can literally dig in and, like, find what he uh, said? <clears throat> like, they can, they can intercept his correspondences on the website? Like, yeah, I was educating him. I was educating this child. I was helping him out. That's why I, that's why I got him in my room in the Motel Jeez 8. King. Hassle. This is, this is Kay. I'll be down the street. A couple houses in about 10 minutes or so. He says, okay. Um, so I have, so I have, let me know so I have an idea. Then that person says, I-35 about the exit in four, at 4th Street. And then it says, I'm here. Well, um, we've got a witness, <coughs> pardon me, we've got a witness that sees him get in a white Grand Cherokee, and they follow that white Grand Cherokee to the hotel, Super Royal First to Fourth and Eastern, uh, at the gas station, uh, and then to the Circle, or Circle K. Yeah, this is the gas station. Yeah, at the gas station, and then fought to the, and then to the Super Eight where, where the guy in the white uh, Jeep Cherokee and him go in. Check, check, and uh, check into a room, and then go back out and go into room 120. All right, uh, and they sit there until the police show up, where she then calls his dad, and uh, and he calls a intern calls the police, and the police show up there to 120, knock on the door, and, and then you come out. So again, I ask, you told officers that you have online identity, Jamie. Um, this guy or uh, Hagen saying that he was talking to you. We got a witness putting you, picking him up at the same most most innocent Republican in Oklahoma, and uh, also the least pedophilic Republican politician. Same time that this message was sent saying I'm here, so I, I kind of got to say that Jamie Tilly's you. Translation: We know it was you. We have you dead to rights. We have insurmountable evidence. Why don't we just speed this process up and you admit it? Let's see how Shorty chooses to react to that one. It's not me. It's not you. It's okay. We communicated by phone. Mm. Um, there, there was no sexual intention that night. Okay. Um, you got anything here? So how did you meet? The detective asked the same question twice, hoping to elicit a different response from Shorty, which then can be later used against him. Um... I want to say it's our coffee shop. Okay. Uh, so, like he just walks in, you guys take up a conversation, become friends? Yeah, that's happened many times. Invite him over to your house. Has your wife met him? I think so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you say he's come to your house several times to play video games? I think just once. Come to your house once to play video games, uh, and then you guys have met at the coffee shop a couple of times? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what if I said that he told you you guys met through a Craigslist ad the very first time? And he posted in Bro, he was just looking for a fourth for Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, dude. Like, it's not weird, officer. I need a fourth for my co op game. Casual encounters. No. Okay. This exchange alone gives a great insight to just how deep in denial Shorty is about his situation. He's used to lying and has been for years. Much more significant, though, is that when confronted with definitive proof of the situation, no. he resorts to the single... I will not give you any of my food.
single word answer, no. A great litmus test to check if behavior is normal is to just imagine how an innocent person who had done nothing wrong might respond to that accusation. It might be a single word, but instead of no, it would be what? Um, well, the innocent guy I'm not just, mm -hmm. is he legitimately underage? Yeah. Ten months of well, He was the first time that you met him, and I said, 16. I, I asked him, I said, hey, does he know how old you were? And he said, yeah, he knows, because we had a discussion about it, and at first he was uncomfortable with it, but then he finally got over it. In this conversation, ask it says, she needs me to go to the store for her. My three-year-old is sick. That's one of the things I've been dealing with tonight. We're not going to have enough time. Can we get together tomorrow, mate, after one? <clears throat> I'll get I'll get even I'll get a hotel room or something if that would make it easier. Um, it goes on talking about coffee the shop. coffee shop, my coffee shop. Um, I'll be alone in about ten minutes at my coffee shop. Uh, he says, Can I help you with anything for spring break? Again, you said just customers, but I'll leave in here close to eight. Okay. Um, I'll be your slave. Mm, that sounds nice. I mean, we go on and on and on. And how old is you? Now, now, hold on now. What I was doing there was talking about the history in the United States of America. We were, we, I was educating this child on. On that sort of thing, okay? That's just, uh, that was what the fuck was going on. You know, it, it's just, uh, it's called education. It's called uh, critical race theory. You misunderstood, brother. My state, Kuwait. No, he voted against the RT. Okay, well, you know, he, he's teaching him the... the Devastating. Doing this child in you know, five months. Okay. Teaching him that it was wrong. So he's telling me that when he first met you through Craigslist, that you that he had posted an ad in Casual Encounters, and that he had a lot of responses for it, but that you said that you wanted him to mess around with your wife while you watched. He said that he showed up to do that, or you guys got together and started talking about that. He found out your wife was pregnant, and then said... It's also called the Roger Stone special. We were just Look it talking up. about GTA. Up that that never happened because she was pregnant. So here's the deal, Ralph. You and I both know what the truth is, and the truth is not what you're telling us. We're not saying you're a bad guy. We're not saying you set out thinking that this is some 15-year-old kid you're going to go bang. We're not saying that. We're saying, hell, maybe you didn't know how old he was. I don't know. I think you probably did based on what he's telling me. But things are what they are. Tell us the truth. Get it out there. Let's get this over with. Get this behind us. So we can all move on. Typically, a confrontation is safe for the later stages of the interview. Here, however, the extreme amount of evidence and the fact that Shorty is outright denying everything forces the detectives to go straight in. They pose the alternative question to downplay the scenario and restate the previous truths in a direct manner. Let's see if Shorty bites this time. You, no, you're not. You're telling us part of what happened, but you're not telling us what's going on. You told the officers there that you had an online identity of Jamie. He's talking about, you, you talk about in these texts when you, when this kick account about your kids and your kid being sick and your coffee shop and that you got customers left and that you close at eight. I mean, it's clearly you. It's clearly And you. we've got a witness that put you there. When you oh, say, I absolutely picked them up. When you say I'm here, the witness is waiting down the street because she thought it was jacked up. Why well, deny if it's legal? What am I missing? It's not legal, dude. Are you fucking stupid? Like, sex work isn't even legal. But, like, a minor, a prostitution of a minor is, like, super illegal, dude. Oh my god. Some people in the chat have Oklahoma brain. I swear to god. They're like. Wait a minute, did the parents sell the child? In which case, it should be legal. She thought it was jacked up that he wouldn't tell her where he was going or anything like that. So she sits down the street and waits. And then she sees him going to the Super 8 Hotel with, with you. And then she gets scared and wondering what the heck's going on. So she calls the police or calls his dad. And then he in turn calls us. So 
here's the deal. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're trying to give you an opportunity, all right, to help yourself out here, all right? It's worth noting the detective's use of you-facing language, which is a common persuasion technique. Frame the situation as, we are giving you an opportunity to sort this out. We want to help you. We have a electronic, I mean, we have the device, we have, these are just photos of it. We actually have downloaded the entire device now. So we have everything that y'all said that night, everything. The thing about it is that tablet, once you, once you sent the message saying I'm here, that tablet was never on the, never in, on the internet again. So the kid conversation couldn't delete. So we have the entire conversation. But you go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you can look at it. You have the, we have the entire conversation because it never hit the network again. This is a bad deal. This is this is um, uh, prostitution of, with a minor. Prostitution within a thousand foot of a church, which are both felonies, and then transporting for the purposes of prostitution. Hackman's Bro, that's so Oklahoma. What the fuck? Are you serious? That's illegal, dude. That's an aggravating uh, principle. Dude, what the fuck is wrong with America, bro? Prostitution within a thousand feet of a church? For the record, <clears throat> over 1,000 feet is not fine. It's just an, it's an aggravating, uh, what is the term? Not a principle. It just like, it's like aggravating factor. So you add like additional shit. It's like assault versus assault with a deadly weapon. You know what I mean? That's why there's a law for it. It's an aggravating factor for any offense. Wait, really? Bro, it's Oklahoma. The entire fucking state is covered then. Y'all been to Oklahoma? Like, very few areas are not within a thousand feet of a church, dude. What the fuck? Which is a misdemeanor. I'm telling you, that's not me. That clearly is you. That's that. that Ralph, that's a lie. You're lying to us right now. That's clearly you. No one else but daughter sick, coffee shop, I'm here and you're there. That's clearly you. I don't know who else you could have been talking to. This is the first and only time in the interrogation that the left detective loses his composure and shifts from his typical posture. Shorty may think the detectives are lying about evidence, but they know that they are not. Given this, the nature of Shorty's denial is so frustrating, it causes even a trained professional to break character. It's hard to blame him. There. Well, well I agree with you. Nobody. You know, buddy. Well, I agree. Coffee shop and has a kid, sick kid, and all this stuff. And it's, showed it, up. it's you. He's, and, and here's the deal. He says it's you that he's talking to. I called out the Steven Crowder technique where your frame breaks in half. And you just start yelling over the other person you're talking to. You show up with condoms. He shows up with lotion. I mean, that's not true. Hold on. Yeah, there was condoms in your bag. Now, cop saw them. They're, that's just not absolutely not true. I did not show up there for any sexual thing. Well, then there's also weed that was in a green plastic container. Marijuana that was in a green plastic container with labels from Colorado that was in the room. Did you ever touch that bottle? No. So there's no way your fingerprints will be on it? No. Okay, because okay, we have the bottle. I don't know what to tell you. He says, matter of fact, he says when the police knocked on the door that y'all were smoking, y'all were both smoking marijuana. He said that he brought a gram when you brought a gram, and you guys rolled a huge blunt, and that you guys were planning on messing around and just hadn't got there yet. And that he was going to do you a favor, by whatever it was you guys were going to do.
Sorry, officers. I was educating him on the dangers of marijuana. The devil's lettuce. Uh, you were going to do him a favor by kicking him some money for spring break. Ralph, like I said, we don't think you're a bad guy. We think you made a bad decision. There's a big difference. It's just ironic because this dude is like mega conservative. I just don't know why he would do that. He's like uh, super conservative and is like a, a member of like multiple church groups I mean, and shit. 17, and literally turned around and like was fucking anti LGBT. Why are all conservatives like this, dude? Like so many of these fucking assholes are like, oh, part of your family values, brother. That's why I think you should. <clears throat> I think you should, you know, push away your uh, LGBT daughters and sons from home. I love being, I love being a conservative. And then they like, I mean, Dennis Hastert is like a record holder for the longest serving speaker of the house. And is also a record holder for, you know, uh, prolific uh, sex crimes. So just, just think about that. He's a Republican. Two grams in a blunt is fat, you filthy backwood smokers. I don't know about that, but I do know the top of the hour is uh, a fat ad break. And if you'd like to no longer see said ads at the ad break, all you need to do is subscribe. Brother, oh, you can months. do it for $5, or you can do it for free with a Twitch Prime, brother. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know what it is. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free cool Prime subscription a month. Eleven months. You can also use the ad block. Ad block. You can use VPN. Here's the ad break now. Okay. Well, well, for all practical purposes, let's say he did lie about that. All right. Jamie Lilly is you, and I can prove it. So at at minimum, you met with a guy at a hotel to pay him for sex. At a minimum. Within the at a minimum. Feet of the church. Yeah, within the thousand feet of the church, which is a felony in itself. So, at minimum, that's what it is. All right? At minimum. So, you know, I'm giving you an opportunity. I don't know if this is real or not. But have he could have a, a there's a likelihood, there's a non zero feet. chance that, like, he played a role. In some of those state laws being written and voted for them. Like drug possession or prostitution near a church. Like. I'm not going to look it up right now, but I would not be surprised. If he literally wrote some of that or voted, absolutely voted for some of those laws. Here and he told me I shouldn't, but I am. I'm giving you an opportunity to do it. To, to take responsibility for it and make it a little bit easier on yourself. At this point, we can see a multitude of tactics pass. coming together, albeit with minimal effect. One, you facing language as discussed. Two, futility technique. There's nothing you can do to change your situation, and the best way to get through this... In February 2017, Shorty came under public criticism for trying to retighten the state drug laws in Oklahoma. Voters had voted to loosen in November 2016. Arguing that voters did not consider the consequences of their vote, I Shorty no introduced the bill to, to increase the penalties the for drug possession within a thousand feet of a church or school, which Oklahoma voters had, to, had voted to classify as a misdemeanor instead of a felony. Wow. Blunts are trash, you baby zoomers need to get a good glass bomb. No way. It's so crazy, dude.
it's not. It's not crazy at all. If you know how Republicans are, you know this. Just like, uh, what's his face? Lost a fucking lawsuit against friend of the show, Will Meneker. Uh, on behalf of... <clears throat> what was the fucking lawsuit? I forget everybody's name here. God damn it. I forgot the fucking lawsuit that was, uh... Hold on. Yes. Ex-Trump advisor Jason Miller sued Will Miniker over a tweet. And he also sued uh, Will's uh, ID, girlfriend ID, and uh, Splinter ID, News reporter at the time, Catherine Kruger. He lost that lawsuit for the record. And of course the lawsuit was, well, the Will Miniker one was because Will said that he was a rat faced baby killer. Um, he sued Katherine Kruger for, uh, covering the story that he had, uh, I think it was like snuck in like, a like abortion juice basically to his, uh, baby mama. Butane hash oil gang rise up. You know what I'm talking about? Like, he like accidentally got, I mean, uh, not accidentally, he like, Slipped in plan B or something in a fucking shake. I'm butchering the details of the story. But. Um, you know, the point is Jason Miller and other conservatives don't give a fuck about abortions either. They will absolutely very easily. Very easily uh, even force someone to get an abortion. Yeah. This is to confess. Three, good cop, bad cop. I want to give you a chance. My partner here doesn't think I should. Detectives are using everything at their disposal to counter Shorty's outright denial. One year is crazy. Love um, if you don't want to take it, that's fine. Okay? I can tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow. All right? First thing tomorrow morning, I'm taking this case to the Clinton County District Attorney's Office. Okay? Um, I'm going to suggest that they file charges for solicitation of a minor. Nine months. Um, possession or uh, solicitation, pardon me, prostitution within a thousand feet of a, a church, and transporting for the purposes of pro transporting for the purposes of prostitution. Okay, and then they're going to decide whether or not they're going to file charges or not. Um, obviously, I've given you the opportunity. I'm giving you an opportunity to help to help yourself out to tell us what happened. Um, I everything that I'm telling you, I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. So. Um, I know that's that, that's why we're sitting here so strongly telling you you're lying because we can prove the, the Jamie Tilly ID. We can prove that identity is you. I mean, amazing things that we can do with 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 electronics and stuff like that that we can that we can recover and stuff like that with warrants and everything. So I, I, I'm telling you right now, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's you. And if you want to move forward from this with keep saying that's not you, then that's fine. But I don't want I don't want to be here not giving you an opportunity to to set the straight set set it straight and tell the truth. It doesn't sound like anything I say is going to help. I don't think anything I say is going to help. One of the first sentences that is not a lie to come out of Shorty's mouth is also the smartest thing that he said for this entire interrogation. Mm, okay. I mean, the truth helps. And just so you know that you guys also exchanged dick pics at one point. Um, and it's still education, sir. Watching pop smoke after this, Sag. I'm doing body positivity. I got a fucked up dick, officer. And I wanted to show this minor that it don't matter if you got a fucked up dick or not. 
As long as you got confidence. I'm an Oklahoma State Senator, officer. When you, hopefully you didn't take a picture of your dick with your phone because that's gonna tag it whenever you send it to somebody. I don't do that. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't understand why he would do this. And he said he knows you because, like you're saying, coffee shop, all that. Said you guys smoked weed on the second floor of the coffee shop in the past. Every day I wake up and realize I'm her sense type bless up chat. What the pray. fuck is a penthouse in Oklahoma, bro? I just don't understand why he would do that. He has nothing to gain. We're talking about one of your uh, state senators. So true me. How does that help him? The one that got caught with yeah, the he has nothing to gain. Why, prostituting. Why would that be him on probation or whatever? How, he has no idea who you are. He thinks your name is Jamie. He has no idea what your real name is. None. Bro, this is like literally the most common defense that uh, like oh, weirdo dead. celebrities fucking use. Which is like, oh, they're just trying to slander my reputation because, like, they know I'm famous. It's like, dude, you're literally a state senator in Oklahoma. Okay? Yes, not a lot goes on in Oklahoma, but even for that state, you are so insignificant. He referred to you as Jamie? It, it, it's them, them clout goblins, brother. They're coming after me. They want my fucking clout. Officer, he was trying to G-check me. <laughs> With his penis. Four months has worked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let's keep going. The whole time I'm talking to him. So it's not like he's going to get anything from any of this. It's not like he gains anything from this. Have you got your phone with you right now? No. Where is it at? Uh, I don't know. I lost it. <clears throat> lost your phone. Cause you I love the southern accent. Shows how disconnected you are from Oklahoma. Yeah, dude. Nobody, nobody sounds like this. You're right. You and I both know we'll be on that phone. Nothing on that phone. Oh wait, he sounds like that. Oh, wait, in the video, he sounds ex okay. Never mind, dude. Oops. Dude, stop sending me boomer ass memes from fucking Majority Report, okay? God damn, y'all are fucking so cringe on the left. Like, the left actually can't fuck a meme, dude. We got it. Oh my God. I he sent the. Five month sub -tech I know, you know, no, I can't defeat you, but he can meme, okay? I got it. Majority Report did a meme. You can tag it or whatever. I mean. The FBI affidavit identified the phone that was used to communicate with the minor was the same phone that Shorty was called on to come into the station. As it turns out, he conveniently left it on top of his car on the way to the police station, so it couldn't be taken in and examined. So other than kicks, how did you communicate with him? Did you email him? The funniest part is when, like, dumbasses from Ohio who, like, for no reason whatsoever defend the confederacy will turn around and be like i can't believe you're making fun of like the southern accent it's like bitch this does not involve you okay you fucking want to be confederate you live in ohio motherfucker god damn so Mario desperate to try to be a southern state like just shut the fuck up okay stick to your own goddamn shit don't worry ohio could cash these hands too i don't think i've ever his email address. Okay. Um, but mostly it was in person, I'll be honest. Okay. Like anytime that we uh, got together, it was, you know, he, like I said, he came to the house once. And we've only, you know, been in, been in person two, maybe two or three times. Um, I live in Ohio, to, rebuke all those claims. What, the claims that fucking 
uh, dudes in Ohio rep the Confederacy, even though, you know, they kind of played a significant role in, in defeating it. Uh, no one in Ohio that's in my chat will unironically say that that's a fake thing. Hella people in Ohio unironically wave the Confederate flag for no, like, like literally just the dumbest thing ever, dude. You are so stupid. Like, how can you be so historically inaccurate? Especially when you turn around. Especially when you turn around and you're like, oh my God, it's just a uh, heritage, not hate. It's like, what heritage? Like, that's not your heritage. You're just racist. <laughs> Oklahoma can't even say shit because it didn't exist at the time. So they should just shut the fuck up. Okay. The evening that we're talking about. How much sexual stuff have you guys done together? Nothing. So that was going to be the first time? We weren't doing anything. I know, not when we got there, you weren't, but that was the plan for that evening. No. Clearly it was. It's for her and Tony, it wasn't. I don't have any legitimate work for you, and you're just doing sexual stuff. What do you mean, you're just doing sexual stuff? He says yes. Then it gets, I mean, it gets worse on down through here. Well, you can't help with that with this stuff. You can definitely help. Another statement. I'm just, I mean, I'm just going through here reading what you wrote, because I can I can prove that you wrote. It. I mean, that that's you. So I'm just letting you know, so you know what's uh, what's coming down the pipe. So how did you? If that's not you, how did you contact him last night or that night? I think he called me. He didn't have a phone. I'm um, sure he called me. That's all I can say. I don't know. How did he know that you were outside? He, he called me and I told him I was on my way. I told him I'd be there at a certain amount of time and I got there. Did you, did you use this? I mean, maybe he should. Like at this point, it's like, you're fucked, dude. Why are you not calling a lawyer? Like, like you're not getting out of this. What is he doing? Like, this is the thing I don't understand. It's like, you're so fucking stupid. Like you, you got caught. They have the evidence. Like, why aren't you pleading the fifth or calling for a fucking lawyer? Like, it, like he's still talking. Like, yeah, you know, we were going to hang out. It's like, what do you mean Thanks. you were going to hang? To do, I mean, they know you're going to fuck, dude. They have the messages. Like, that's so stupid. The phone that you've lost? Yeah, I it's the only phone I have. You don't understand anything, shut up, him. Okay. What was that number? What? And you think that what you've told us today is going to make sense to a jury of your peers? All I can say is the truth, sir. And you're not. Multiple police Hang murders on. took place over the weekend, and Hassan is focusing on the stupid shit on YouTube. Is a clear distraction. This dude is borderline compromised. Hassan, wake the fuck up, dude. Says woke McCarthyist. These are old trials. Wake the fuck up, Hassan, and focus on the present. Dude, I got some weirdos in the chat right now. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, oh, I'm watching true crime. Okay, sorry. I agree. All you can say to help yourself out is the truth, but you're not doing that. So, he has a point. Yeah, it's a dumb point, dude. Like, again, and I think I need to repeat myself sometimes. I am not your content monkey. Okay, you can't just like throw bananas at me and be like, dude, just dance, please. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to literally just talk about the news nonstop every single day, 24 fucking seven, dude. Okay. It's not happening. Like that's also not good for my mental faculties. Okay. So I'm going to do this instead. 219 number. You say you lost. Now I'm going to go fucking answer. pee. I'll be After back. I called you. I 
apparently have left it on top of my car or something. I tried to find it because I needed to call. Hassle, 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 someone hassle. else. See, just recently I lost my, yeah, I talked to you when I was um, about to leave my house. Um, and I went back and looked on the ground. I, Chat, I am taking over for Hassan today. Say hello and be nice to me, please. And so you don't know how long this conversation is going on right now. Correct. Yeah. As it turns out, the ensuing FBI investigation found out that Shorty had created the email alias that he was using in 2012 and had posted several even more lewd Craigslist solicitations over the years. His curiosity about how far back the chat records go likely indicates that there is a hell of a lot more to be found. So basically all that can happen is that at this point is that we get more evidence about what's going on. Because there's nowhere to go from here. But more to add to I can find. I know you guys don't believe me, and I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise My unless chat. I have something. I think he meant you ain't giving coverage about what happens to cops on a daily basis. No, I fucking doubt that that dude was, like, talking about cops being murdered. I think he's probably talking about cops doing murdering that I'm, like, not talking about. What? My friend, you are not in the right community if you, if you think that, like, people are going to fucking yell at me about um, police. Cat sitting for I mean, it's probably bait regardless. It was probably some dumb shit. A mug in their kitchen. What do I do, chat? Like, Lobby wants to play Mario Kart. I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I, I want to watch this. I want to finish this. And then after that, so Miguel, I'll do, I'll do it with them next time. I'm going to show you, and I, I just don't know what else to say. I find it hard to believe that you magically lost your phone on the way over here as well. No, you don't endorse cop murder, please. No, of course I don't endorse cop murder. I don't endorse murder, period, dude. What the fuck? What a fucking psychotic take, dude. It's not the first time, sir. Well, and, and then just look at it. Okay, take all this crap in the last yeah, yeah, in this conversation that we've had out of it, all right? So just put yourself in my shoes, okay? So you got a guy who gets caught in a room with uh, a minor, right? in a hotel room with a minor. Um, and he comes in and talks to us, knowing that he's had a conversation with this minor who on my John Probably his phone, because of the way he was at the he was at the store, he was at the guy's store, he was in his car. So more than likely, it was only got on, on his phone. So you're coming in um, blind. Not knowing, also other, extremely nervous. Well, I got you. Yeah, I know, but 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 put yourself in my shoes. You're coming in this blind, only knowing that we're going to want to talk to you about, you know, the hotel room, and you know, all of a sudden you come in and you don't have a phone, and you you I know you live with your phone. You have to. So that's just strange to us, you know. Um, is your phone on, is your phone on you right now? No, it's it's not. Is it in your car? No. Can I look at your car? Not uh, sure. Okay. When did you drive up here today? Sorry? When did you drive up here today? When? What? What vehicle did you drive up here? My car. What is your name? Oh, the YG? Mm -hmm. Correct, Turkey? What year is it? Uh, I'm not going to Um. Have you talked to him since that night? No. I honestly would have loved to have talked to his parents. Um, I had no idea that he was still with his parents. I wouldn't have been with a minor. 
Well, you knew that he was kicked out of high school. How the fuck does he not know? How how the fuck doesn't he know his car's year? That's kind of weird as hell. I mean, I guess I this entire time I thought I had a 2010 Camry. When it turns out I had a, a 2011 Camry that I bought in 2010. You know, so I guess there's that. Yeah, I didn't know I knew that. Well, he told me he dropped out of high school. Okay, you knew that he dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. And that he was trying to get his GED. But, like, I was close right. enough, you, you know what I mean? Well, he just went up when the man told me he was coming. Okay. Guys, I'm, t I'm just as why this is just so, I don't understand why you would do this. Because that's all we've ever talked about is just life and just trying to get get him better i guess i had no idea he lived with his parents is he still in high school so he is out of high school thanks to ed shay born against for my graduate So why'd you tell the officers there that you're, you had an online identity by Jamie? I didn't say that. I said that he's called me Jamie. <clears throat> well, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to, to, uh, you did because we got body cameras and I actually saw it. So, I mean, there was, it was, they were talking to him, they were talking to you, <clears throat> and you said you had a own, that you went online or had an online identity of Jane. That's it. You didn't say Tilly, the last one, but you said Jane. I don't remember that story. Okay. He asked, I remember him asking what my name was. Dude, I see why JCS pops off and these other channels don't. I see it. It's just like these other channels, like they just don't hit like JCS does, you know? No, there's actually an insane amount of JCS videos that this one chatter sent me. He sent me literally every single JCS video that's been deleted. Like literally every single one. He like uploaded all of them. So we could watch them, but no, I have it. I have it. I have the link. It's just that like. And now we're JC's like four hours of content from the other guys. About email conversations earlier. Like he, mm -hmm. he nails JCS nails the, uh, the pacing, the narration. Sometimes he will add like, sometimes he will add, uh, interesting tidbits and commentary. He's got an attitude. It's just like hard to. Yeah, we get technique descriptions. I'm just trying to find something for you guys. I... Hey, I sent Hank. Is there anything I there love you. Much love that from shows Pakistan. what I'm saying? on email because I honestly don't remember if I've ever emailed him yeah this shit's is just garbage and thing. I'm not sure that's what I was asking if you remember anything uh, I, I gave the officer my email I had this the other night um, the witch talk elf I guess I'll search to see if there's any I'm just Matt Orchard's pretty good too oh this guy this guy's back. Watching this video. There is no such thing as a coincidence. The fact that you're watching this video means you're energetically aligned with me and this message. Your thoughts create your reality. I've seen this. Well, one. you already knew oh that. Oh my God, there's yeah. someone running behind you. You still live a life oh. that you dread. Excuse me. Ah! That is because when you visualize your dream life. What? Well, you already knew that. Yet, you still live a life that you dread. That is because when you visualize your dream life, you unconsciously believe that it is unrealistic.
No shot. Dude, someone someone did that. Someone added Someone added that, right? There's no way that's real. I've seen it before. I've seen this video already. It's fake. But it's so good. Oh god, I'm retweeting this. This is so fucking good. Bro, he was just like, he's just like, this is my YouTube video. You're about to get hecked. Your reality. Well, you already knew that. Yet, you still live a life that you dread. Nine months of lunch, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> you just turned around and fucking hexed her, dude. He's great, dude. He's, he actually is a fucking alien. I swear to God. I've seen a lot of the Let Me Know content content yeah i know the jcs voice isn't even jcs jcs personal channel based opinions I don't want to watch the rest of this, dude. I'm so bored of this. Uh, I, I like, it's Yo, just like fucking, it, it fucked me up, dude. It just like wound me down here. Let's see the conclusion. Okay. He got caught. All right. He's just like. And many more. That's all it is. We'll watch the conclusion for those of you who don't know. It doesn't change the fact that you're a good person or that you care about. Okay, dude. Yes, it does. It does change the fact. He's not a good person. That's your family? Right. None of that changes. Yeah, that's but the reason you're having trouble thinking of something to say is because you know there's nothing you can I'm say. I'm having trouble thinking of something to say. I'm trying to... Look, you're trying to decide whether or not you should tell us what happened. No, I've told you everything. Okay. And no phone on you, no phone in your car. Do you mind if I patch it out real quick? Sure. Following the interrogation, Shorty was released with an order not to contact the victim after paying a hundred thousand dollars bond. Wait, what? He resigned from the Oklahoma Senate five days later and awaited trial. Six months later, it was revealed that that's crazy. That they like, dude. That that is like, I guess that's uh politician privilege i don't know what the fuck that is like that's that's wild that he just that he was just able to get away with that the that's FBI crazy and the united states secret service had joined the investigation and in september a federal grand jury indicted shorty on four federal sex trafficking and child pornography charges involving both the march incident and videos that shorty is accused of distributing from a smartphone in 2012 and 2013 subsequently the cleveland county district attorney dropped the state charges to let the federal trial go ahead Shorty initially pled not guilty with the trial date set for December 2017, but before the trial could proceed, Shorty reached a plea agreement to plead guilty to one child prostitution charge, and the prosecutor agreed to drop the others. He was jailed immediately on November 30th after his guilty plea and awaited sentencing with a minimum of 10 years to serve. In June 2018, prosecutors revealed in a sentencing memorandum that Shorty had had sex twice with the victim in the year before they were found to you should know all about getting away with it? Dude, what do you mean? Not for fucking crimes, though. Like, I I'm, the, I'm the biggest square on the planet. I don't even do fucking drugs, dude. Holy shit. Together at the hotel. Like, not even cool A year ones. and a half after the original incident, Shorty was sentenced in Oklahoma City Federal Court. The mandatory minimum sentence in the case was 10 years, and the prosecution recommended 25. He received 15 years in prison with an additional 10 years of supervised release and placed at the Federal Correctional Institution in Segoville, Texas. As oh, that's well nice of them. $125,000 in restitution to the victim. Fun fact, Oklahoma has the highest state, uh, uh, highest number of uh, female prisoners per capita in the country. Shorty will be eligible for parole. In They're literally like a penal state. So kind of weird that uh, they were so understanding and welcoming to this uh, wonderful Christian man. 2032. 